Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Faith, if you're new here, and I have acne. I've actually had acne my entire life, and today I am talking all about what foods I ate and didn't eat to help heal my skin naturally. So the only way I was actually able to naturally heal my acne was by discovering an online acne clinic called the Natural Acne Clinic. Pretty self-explanatory there, but this was the most amazing program. Basically for the past 16 weeks, a coach has been walking with me through my acne journey. They taught me all about acne, what it was, which foods often trigger acne, what ingredients can cause your pores to become clogged, what hormones hormones need to be balanced in order to naturally heal your skin. So this video is not sponsored by the clinic. I actually reached out to them because I am so passionate about it. It has honestly changed my life, given me my confidence back. So I plan to make a whole acne video sharing my history with acne, my journey. But today we are just talking about the food, food that I ate during the past 16 weeks, foods that I focused on, and which foods I avoided. So you might actually be surprised to hear which foods are often acne triggers for people with genetic acne. So I'm really hoping you find this video helpful and informative and that you can receive some encouragement from me as someone who has struggled with acne for over 20 years and has now finally cleared it at the age of 33. So I'm gonna walk you through a whole day of eating and at each meal, I'll tell you which foods I switched out during the past 16 months that I normally would eat and which ones I focused on. And so watch to the end because I will be giving tons of helpful tips along the way and I'm so excited to share what I have learned with you all. So let's jump back in time to my breakfast. So first thing in the morning, I would start with a probiotic on an empty stomach. I would get these from Clove Hill and I don't know if I noticed a big difference in my digestion. It stayed pretty much the same over the course of the four months, but I always took this every day, one pill on an empty stomach and tried to drink a ton of water. Usually I would take a multivitamin and some Brazil nuts, but I would take this on an empty stomach and I actually had to stop taking multivitamins because B12 is something that in high doses can cause acne. Obviously, as someone who eats a plant-based diet, it's really important to get enough B12 from supplements or fortified foods, so definitely do this with the help of a doctor or make sure you're getting your blood levels checked. After my probiotic, I would usually have my regular morning black milky tea with oat milk. And for the first couple months, I was very strict and I found some oat milk that only had oats and water in it and it didn't contain fortified vitamins like B12 and it also didn't contain canola oil. But after a while, I really missed my barista oat milk and so I tried adding it back in to see if just a couple tablespoons affected my skin and it didn't. So I have just been enjoying my barista oat milk in my tea every morning for the last couple months. Breakfast every day for me is usually oatmeal and thankfully not too much changed with my breakfast. I just had to watch out what milk I was using. If I was making baked oatmeal, I tried to use milk that didn't have vitamins fortified into it or canola oil. So I made a ton of homemade oat milk to use for my baked oatmeal, but I've kind of gotten in the habit of really simple microwave oatmeal where I just mash half of a banana in a bowl, add in half a cup of rolled oats, about a tablespoon of ground flax seed, a pinch of salt, and I would either just add in some really simple homemade oat milk or water to this and microwave it until soft. Once it was super hot and cooked through, I would stir in some berries. I don't know if you guys have been following me for a while, but you know I usually don't eat much fruit and that is because I forgot about frozen berries. In America, I eat so many berries. They're definitely my favorite fruit, bananas and frozen berries. So I don't know why I forgot about them, but they have re-entered my life and I am so excited to be eating more fruit in the morning in a way that I enjoy and that satisfies me. And then another thing that was a big change for me is that I could not eat peanut butter and actually still have not been eating peanut butter for the last four months. You all know I am a peanut butter addict, so I had to remember how delicious homemade cashew and almond butter are. As you can see, this isn't the most protein-packed breakfast. Usually in the past, I would add some protein powder to my oatmeal, 
but a lot of protein powders contain potassium chloride and that can also trigger acne. So that is something I had to watch out for. All of the protein powders that are affordable or that I have access to here in Malaysia contain potassium chloride, so I just skipped out on it and grew to really enjoy my whole food, plant-based, simple breakfasts. Right after breakfast on a full stomach, I would take three different herbal supplements, two tablets each, and these were to help balance my hormones, help with my skin, and help to balance back out my stress levels. I'll be sure to leave all of the links for the products I am using down in the description box in case you want to check them out. Next for morning coffee, I've kind of gone back to enjoying black coffee. It was just a way for me to avoid oils in my oat milk. And I just really don't like coffee with any other milk than oat milk. So back to black it is. For lunch this day, I made one of my favorite dishes, almond butter noodles. And this was something that I finally figured out how to enjoy with all of the foods I had to avoid. So for the past four months, I have not been eating soy. So soy sauce, edamame, tofu, tempeh. Yeah, it's been hard on a plant-based diet, but it's doable. I also have been avoiding seaweed and iodine, which is everywhere here in Asia. So finally, I found coconut aminos, which is a soy sauce substitute. It took me forever to find, so I was really missing Asian food for the first couple months of this program. But we found coconut aminos, and finally, I was able to make almond butter satay sauces and just get my Asian cuisine fix back. So that was very nice. I also switched to sea salt or table salt that didn't have iodine. Iodine can trigger acne and I feel like that might be one of my bigger triggers, which is something so surprising to me. So that will be pretty sad. Seaweed is one of my favorite foods and it's something I'll just definitely have to keep an eye on my iodine levels to make sure I don't become deficient. So yeah, a lot of my lunches included beans and rice and potatoes. I really tried to focus on leafy green veggies or broccoli. And I tried to use olive oils and coconut oils instead of canola or vegetable oils, which is easy for me when I'm cooking at home, but sometimes at restaurants, it was pretty hard to avoid. So here I am making an almond butter satay sauce using coconut aminos instead of soy sauce. I will link this recipe down below. It's one of my favorites. I could literally drink this sauce. All it has is almond butter, some coconut aminos or soy sauce if you can handle it, and some maple syrup, lime juice, or you could use rice vinegar if you don't have limes on hand, fresh ginger and garlic, and then you just use some water to thin it out until it reaches your desired consistency and you can pour this over whatever you want. So this is where my meals get a little weird because I can't have soy. Normally I would do tofu or tempeh or edamame with these almond butter noodle dish. But because I can't have that, I just kind of choose a different protein. Maybe I'll do frozen peas or I'll just grab some canned beans um, just because I want a balanced meal. So yeah, some of my meals are a little weird. They have been for the last four months, especially if I'm cra craving like a soy or an Asian style dish where I use coconut aminos. Yeah, my protein is usually a little odd, but it does a trick. So this day I chose butter beans as my protein source. Normally I would have done tofu or tempeh with this dish, but we are avoiding those things. So butter beans it was. I just drained and rinsed them in a colander. And then to a pot, I added some boiling water and salt and cooked my noodles until done. A lot of people assume gluten, sugar, and dairy are the main culprits of acne, and that can be the case for some people. Everybody's skin is different, but during this program, I could eat gluten, I could eat chocolate, I could eat sugar. I did avoid dairy, but that's very easy for me as I don't eat dairy anyways, so I was very happy that I could enjoy homemade bread and noodles and things like that because that would have been really hard to exclude gluten from my diet along with everything else. At this point, I've got some roasted veggies, I've got some cooked noodles, I've got my butter beans, and I've got that delicious almond butter sauce that I just stirred all together until combined. And this was a delicious meal. It never fails to satisfy me. I could eat noodles every day. They're just so fun to eat, and my kiddos love them, and this sauce is delicious. I really hope you try it out. Oh, I love these noodles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
In addition to my probiotic in the morning, I also tried to eat more probiotic rich foods. Kombucha and kimchi were things that I was recommended to eat more of and that is very fine for me. I love kombucha, I love kimchi, and I used to make kombucha in the past and had stopped for a long time, but my friend had a mother or a scoby and she gave me some and I am back to making homemade kombucha. So usually in the afternoon or while I was cooking dinner, I would enjoy a glass. Dinners most days tended to be Mexican, Italian, Mediterranean inspired meals as those are easier to avoid soy. And this day I was going to a party at night with my family and we were thankfully doing a Mexican inspired menu. So I decided to make a huge pot of black beans, which I just cooked some dried black beans in my pressure cooker as it's so much cheaper here in Malaysia. And then I made a cilantro cream sauce. I'm supposed to be avoiding dairy, which for me as a plant-based eater is very easy. I'm very used to using cashews or coconut milks to make dairy products, but I whipped up a really delicious cashew sauce that I needed to soak some cashews for. I also made a quadruple batch of homemade fresh salsa for everybody. I think there were about to be 30 people at the party, so I knew I would need a lot. And this was such a good recipe. I will link it down below. All I did was chop up some fresh onion and garlic in my food processor, add in some jalapeno without the seeds, and then I used cherry tomatoes to blitz until it was kind of juicy and watery. Oh, and cilantro, of course. And once this was combined and well chopped, I would actually pour it into a fine mesh colander to strain out a bunch of the water that released when I processed the tomatoes and the onions and garlic. And this made the best texture of salsa ever. It does not look appetizing as I'm doing this, but trust me, try this next time you make fresh salsa. It makes the texture and the flavor so much better and it's not so watery. Once I stirred out a bunch of the liquid, I would pour this into a massive mixing bowl. As you can see, I made a quadruple batch, so a ton of tomatoes were included. And then you add fresh lime juice and salt and just keep tasting it until you have the right amount. And this was a delicious salsa that almost entirely got eaten by everybody and was thoroughly enjoyed. All right, let's try this salsa. When I first was trying to clear my skin, I didn't have many chips just cause the oil in them, but I don't find they affect my skin, so. Mm. A lot more salt and lime juice later. Perfect. My kids are playing in the... Harper, where are you? Where are you? So back to the cilantro cashew sauce. After my cashews had soaked for a while, I put them in a blender with a bunch of cilantro, a bunch of jalapenos, which I actually ended up adding so much more than you're seeing here because this was also a quadruple batch. Yeah, just cashews, cilantro, garlic, lime juice, and salt. And you blend this, taste it, and add more of whatever you need. And you will end up with a very delicious sauce that everyone will want the recipe for. As you can see, this made a ton, which was so fun to bring a large amount of food to share with people. Whenever I'm going to a party, I like to bring a lot of plant-based food so that people can try it, and usually they enjoy it, and so that's really fun for me. Once my black beans had stopped cooking, I added a little bit of oil into a pan. I always used olive oil throughout this last four months, and then I added in some minced garlic and some onion and I am just trying to add a lot more flavor to these beans. The beans we get here, at least the black beans here in Malaysia, tend to be very bland, so I'm trying to learn from past experiences and add a lot more flavor when I can, so here we are adding in some salt and cumin and fresh jalapeno, and then I just poured all of the beans along with the salty juice that I cooked them in and allowed this to simmer to add more flavor to these beans. So I've got my cilantro cashew sauce. I think 30 people are coming tonight, so I made as much as I could. Got a huge thing of really good fresh salsa. I ended up making some pickled jalapenos. It's so easy. I will link the recipe I used down below. Got a big bowl of black beans. I know some people are bringing meat. There are a lot of meat eaters in our crowd, so 
I always try to bring a plant-based protein source for myself and everyone who wants it. Got tons of chips and tortillas. So I will show you my plate at the party, but it will contain all of this delicious goodness and probably some rice. So I thought I would remember to take a video of my food at the party, but I didn't. But I had some leftovers and so the next day I enjoyed the exact same plate that I had at the party with rice, salsa beans, some veggies, and that cilantro sauce on top. So I didn't do all of this cooking on one day. Actually, this is a very typical day of eating for me, but I did film some recipes on different days just so that you could see how I made some of these recipes that I've been enjoying the last four months. So for dessert, I thankfully could still enjoy chocolate and sugar, everything in moderation. Um, and thankfully I have found lots of different healthy whole food ways to enjoy chocolate. As you know, I love chocolate. So I thought I would include a recipe that is one I have been enjoying a lot over the past four months and that is for sweet potato brownies. So sweet potatoes and other foods rich in vitamin A are good for your skin. So of course I had to include some brownies in this video. And this recipe is so simple. It's one of the most loved recipes on my blog. So if you haven't tried it out yet, you definitely should. It's basically just sweet potato and I actually didn't even have enough sweet potato. So I used some mashed banana and then you add in some almond butter, coconut oil, coconut flour, cocoa powder. You can add in some extra chocolate chips like I did. And those are the main ingredients. All you have to do is use one bowl, mix all of the ingredients together until smooth, pour it into a lined baking pan and spread it out into an even layer. And I always like to add extra chocolate chips on top just for aesthetic and who doesn't want more chocolate? But these are some of the fudgiest, wholesome brownies you will ever have. The key, the key to making them super fudgy is to allow them to cool overnight in the fridge. I know it's hard to wait, but if you want fudgy brownies, allow them to cool completely. And thankfully, storing them in the fridge just makes them better. So I would always have a batch of these brownies on hand for whenever I wanted something sweet, but also wanted to feel like I was caring for my skin and helping it get clear. Again, all of the recipes will be linked down below or if I don't have a blog post for them, I will write them out so that you can make them at home and enjoy them. Whether you have acne or not, all of these recipes are delicious. And that is a typical day of eating for me as I naturally heal my acne. I have a whole nother video coming in the future where I'll talk more about the natural acne clinic and the 16 week program I went through, all the things they taught me about skincare and pore clogging ingredients that you might find in your shampoo, conditioner, laundry detergent. So if you're interested in the clinic, I will leave all of their information down below and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye.